Hello and welcome to my report, East Mojo's daily evening news bulletin update. We bring you the biggest and latest news from East and Northeast of India. I'm Simran Bajaj and I'll be your host for today. I'll also be giving you updates from Assam. We're being joined by our state correspondents. We have um, uh, Medolino Ambrosia from Nagaland, Bangamla Sali Kapai from Manipur, and Irani Sonwal Lepcha from Arunachal Pradesh. So let's start today's show. First off, let's head to Irani from Arunachal Pradesh. And Irani, can you give us the latest COVID-19 updates? Yeah, hi, Simran. So uh, uh, the capital complex of Arunachal Pradesh is still under complete lockdown since July 6, and it will end uh, 5 a.m. on 3rd of August. So if you look into the data, uh, capital complex uh, has the highest number of uh, active cases, that is 336. And uh, though 385 have recovered, but the number uh, of uh, COVID-19 positive cases are rising daily. And due to this, only the state government uh, had decided to for a complete lockdown. And followed by the followed by Changlang, which has 68 cases. Uh, uh, it is the second highest if you talk about the uh, active cases in the state. And uh, now if we go through the data which was provided by the health department yesterday at 10 p.m., the active number of cases uh, till yesterday in the state of Arunachal Pradesh is 730 with, uh, and uh, 677 have discharged so far. And uh, with three deaths, the uh, state tally is at 1,410. And uh, Simran, I would also like to, uh, you, you know, uh, mention about a story which is already in our website, uh, eastmojo.com, and the viewers can go and look into the report. But uh, this report is regarding a molestation case. So uh, a 22-year-old girl was allegedly molested by a Don Bosco Youth Center director, Father Syriac P., uh, in the month of June. So now the National Commission for Women, NCW, has taken some motor cognizance of the molestation case. And uh, if I talk about the conversation which I had with a member of NCW, Ms. Soso Shaiza, today, she told that as of now, they are waiting for the detailed report from the Natural Pradesh Director General of Police. And uh, NCW had earlier written a letter to the DGP asking him for the immediate, uh, immediately look into the matter. Simran. Thank you so much for that update. And now I would like to head to... Uh... Sally from Manipur. So, uh, Sally, there uh, has been an ambush, uh, Assam Rifles ambush in Channel District in which our soldiers have been martyred. Okay. I mean, can you tell our viewers more about that? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Simran. Yes, there has been a report of uh, an ambush which was happened in uh, Manipur yesterday. So, the incident happened at a Kongchal village in Chandil District. And according to the report, uh, it, this happened somewhere around uh, 6.30 p.m., when the uh, security forces from Assam Rifles, Fort Assam Rifles, were coming back to their base after going for patrolling, foot patrolling, that's what has been said. So um, initially they were, um, came into attack with the IE, uh, this uh, IET explosion, and then later on they were started to, you know, firing from the jungle. So that is definitely from the militants. So yes, uh, unfortunately, three of the Chawans of uh, Assam Rifle have been declared dead, and another five of them were injured. But uh, fortunately, it says that this five uh, person who had injured are not a non-fatal uh, uh, non injuries. So they are at the moment currently uh, treated at the military hospital. Now, uh, this uh, three matured from the Assam Rifle. One is the uh, Habil Tal from Assam, and uh, one is an Assam Rifle from Manipu, and the other one is also an Assam Rifle from, uh, sorry, Rifleman from, uh, from Nagaland. So yes, uh, it's an unfortunate incident that happened yesterday, and uh, uh, behind this uh, attack, uh, the three of the banned uh, militant groups from the Northeast have uh, claimed uh, joint responsibility, uh, which says that the United Liberation Front of Assam, Independent, Alpha I, uh, and then Revolutionary People's Front, which is the political wind of the People's Liberation of Army of Manipur and Manipur Nagas People Front, MNPF. These are the three banned uh, outfits in, uh, the, which has been operating in Nordisa uh, have claimed openly that they are the ones uh, behind this attack. 
So uh, yes, this has happened uh, yesterday exactly somewhere around at 6.30 p.m. And moreover, the Chief Minister uh, of Manipur, N. Piran Singh, had already tweeted on his uh, Twitter account, you know, contending the attack and calling this specific attack as a cowardice attack. So it's very unfortunate and uh, likely, uh, you know, uh, the uh, statement, the official statement are yet to be out from the Afghan rifles, but the sources, whatever we have uh, received so far is from the sources from the Afghan rifles itself, but we're still waiting for the official statement from them. Simran. Thank you for that update, Sally. Also, can you give our viewers the COVID-19 update? Sure. Uh, let me begin with the uh, COVID that unfortunately in less than 24 hours, Manipur has again reported with two more COVID tests, including the, uh, the one which was reported yesterday. So in total, we've got three tests when it comes to COVID related. Uh, the first being was reported at uh, 2.30 a.m. this morning, where a 48-year-old man from Lemukong, which is in Gampokpi district, uh, he was uh, admitted at Rims Hospital on uh, June 8 with the chronic kidney uh, uh, problems with some other uh, multiple health complications. And uh, unfortunately, he was uh, tested positive on July 26, along with the uh, patient who had uh, who had died yesterday. That's what it's been said. So this is the first case which was reported uh, this morning, which is at 2 p.m., uh, which is at 2.30 a.m., sorry. And another 48-year-old, uh, another we are not sure it's a man or it's a female, has been uh, reported that again at 11 a.m. from the same hospital, which is at Rims Hospital. But for this latest uh, COVID, uh, we are yet to receive any information, to, you know, whether uh, the person, the patient had earlier other complications. But it only mentioned that uh, the patient who had died at 11 a.m. this morning had some kidney problem. And that person also was admitted at Rims Hospital but we don't have any information when the person was admitted at the specific hospital. So this is the unfortunate news that are coming uh, from the Manipur when it, it comes to COVID-related. Uh, let me talk about the, uh, the COVID, which is the single highest uh, spike when it comes to COVID-related in Manipur. So now at the moment, the total confirmed cases for COVID-19 stands at 2,458. Uh, with this, we've got... 805 are the active cases and 1,653 persons have already recovered and being discharged from the hospital. So uh, the recovery rate has also uh, increased 7.24%. This is the current recovery rate in Manipur. So these are the uh, latest development when it comes to COVID in Manipur. Simran. Thank you so much for that update, Sally. And now I would like to give our viewers the latest updates from Assam. So uh, talking about the COVID-19 updates first. So Assam recorded four more deaths yesterday, yesterday evening. That's the latest updates that we have. 1,348 new cases were reported and uh, 1,214 people were discharged. So when we come to 195 total reported cases of infection, 27,832 people have been discharged, 8,368 people. Uh, uh, remain as active cases of COVID-19. 92 people have passed away due to the infection and three people have migrated to other states. Now, when we talk about the number of tests conducted yesterday, so uh, the number of tests conducted yesterday when the update was given was 18,941 in the last 24 hours as per the update last night. And um, when we talk about the places from which the cases have emerged, so out of 1,348 cases reported yesterday, 348 were from Kamrup Metro and 127 from Kamrup uh, Rural District. Now, the number is a bit on the higher side when you look at Kamrup Metro uh, because uh, as seen uh, earlier in, in this week and the week prior, the number had fallen down considerably for Gohati City. It was even lesser than 200. Now, um, when we talk about the positivity rate, that is uh, the number of people testing positive per 100 people getting tested, it has in Assam. And now it's risen again a little bit of that. And um, when we're talking about Assam's recovery rate, so Assam's recovery rate stands at 76.77%. And uh, Assam is now among the 16 states in the country where the recovery rate is more than that of the national. Haryana 78%, Assam 76%, uh, 
followed by Telangana at 74, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat at 73, Rajasthan at 70 percent rate, which is way higher than the national um, average of recovery rate. Now that's what we have for the COVID-19 updates. Now let's talk about Assam floods. So today, another person has um, uh, floods have claimed another life in Assam, and with that, the death toll of Assam floods is at 108. Now, this person who has passed away is from Morigao district, and uh, when we talk about the number of population affected in Assam due to floods, and the worst affected district in Assam is Gualpara at the moment, uh, with almost three lakh seventy-five seventy-five thousand people. A uh, figure a bit on the higher side of that. Now, um, latest updates given by the Assam State Disaster Management Authority, and um, uh, when we talk about the rivers. Which are flowing above the danger mark. So Brahmaputra River is flowing above the danger mark in Jorhat, Sonitpur, and Dhubri. Dhansri River is flowing above the red mark in Golaghat. Jiawali River is uh, flowing above the red mark in uh, Sonitpur, and Kopli River is flowing above the red mark in Nogao and in Borpeta district. So that's about the rivers. Um, now let's head on and uh, let's talk about the relief camps. So currently um, there are. Uh, We talk about the fatalities and casualties in uh, the national parks. Let's talk about Kaziranga National Park. And um, so, when we talk about the number of animals who've died, one forty-three animals have died till now due to floods, and one sixty-five animals have been rescued till date. Uh, due, uh, by uh, this is as per the information given by the DFO of Eastern Assam Wildlife Division. And when we talk about the number of camps affected. Uh, So, twenty-one camps are inundated in Kaziranga National Park, and three have been vacated out out of the total two hundred and twenty-three. And when we talk about Orang National Park, three camps have been inundated out of the forty camps in the park. Um, in Tinsukia Wildlife Division, one camp is inundated out of the ten camps. It's flooded, and uh, that's the update that we have for Assam Complex has been closed for forty-eight hours. Can you tell our viewers why? Uh, yes, Simran. So today, the Chief uh, Minister's residential complex was closed for 40 hours because uh, some uh, staffers there at the residential complex has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, uh, the number of how many staffers yet to be ascertained, but the CMO Nagaland has also taken to Twitter to confirm that a few persons from the Chief Minister's residential complex has test tested positive, and as per the SOP. Uh, the complex has been sanitized, and the residential office has been closed for forty-eight hours. Uh, however, they've also informed that the normal functioning of uh, the CMO uh, of the Chief Minister's office uh, is continuing, following all guidelines. Also, uh, sources close to Chief Minister has informed uh, informed us that uh, the Chief Minister has tested negative, and uh, these uh, staffs were also tested as part of um, you know the the drive where. All legislators and uh, the staffs who are to attend the uh, state assembly are to be tested. So, um, in view of that, all uh, all staffs of the chief minister's residential office also got themselves tested, and the, uh, the results were declared. Some some were declared yesterday. That's what we were told yesterday and today. Uh, unfortunately, today uh, some of them tested positive, and results for other staff. Uh, some few other staffs are still awaited. Referred to August 13, and yesterday the Commissioner and Secretary of uh, the Assembly Secretary told us that it has been de uh, deferred. And uh, later, an update was also passed saying that um, the, the that ha the date has to be you know de deferred to August 13 due to certain reasons. Now, uh, uh, following that, you know, Secretary of Office for 14 MLA uh, bodyguard a driver then. Uh, <clears throat> The different bodyguard of another uh, legislature. Uh, the session, which was supposed to be held today, to update new cases of COVID-19 here in uh, in Nagaland. And out of these 48 new cases, uh, information as to how many people outside the quarantine centers are being tested, uh, positive quarantine centers, which of course has become a concern. And in this regard, Kohima is under total lockdown as of now. So uh, an official order. For, Kohi, uh, for the extension of a total lockdown in Kohima is yet to be announced, uh, considering that uh, we have a day left for this month to be completed tomorrow. So um, we extended for another week. Uh, but overall, the existing uh, lockdown extensions that are 
you know, in the state. It has been extended till August 31st. And um, again, come back to the new case. And out of this, presently, we have 961 at cases and 595 recovered cases. Also, the state has reported four uh, COVID-19 related that. And as we uh, total up the active cases and the recovered cases and the date that cases, we see that one number is missing. Why? Because there were five deaths reported here in the state of Nagaland. However, only four are said to be related to COVID-19 and one is not related to COVID-19, which is why uh, the tally does not uh, makes no mention of the fifth uh, death report. Um, Yes, and so uh, uh, just repeating again, the state's tally is at 1,061, and uh, the active cases and recovered cases that I, the numbers that I've mentioned, are likely to change because uh, uh, although active cases are being reported on a daily basis, uh, as I keep mentioning, the state also witnesses uh, recovered cases on a daily basis. So. Uh, since we are yet to get today's updates, uh, hopefully, if they are recovered cases, the number of active cases will reduce and the number of uh, recovered cases will also increase. So this is all from Naglin Simran. Thank you so much for that update, Meadow. And now, uh, quickly, I would like to give our viewers the COVID-19 updates from Mizoram, Assam. So with that, the total number of cases in Mizoram is at 397. Uh, the number of discharge patients has gone up to 234 and um, active cases have uh, gone down to 163 and one person has migrated to other states. And uh, that's all for today. I would like to thank our viewers for constantly watching us and supporting us from Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. Don't forget, it's my report by East Mojo. And all the stories that we've discussed today are already live on our website. You can log on to www.eastmojo.com and you can read all the reports there. If you have any ideas, any, so if you come across any piece of information, any video or any image that looks unauthentic, please send it across. Again, you can send it to us through our email address that is editor at the rate eastmojo.com or through our Facebook page. And we will definitely...